Hello, everyone. As you're joining in, you can share this broadcast and say, Lord, I receive the power of God in my life. I receive the power of God in my life. Every single day, there's a goal that the Father wants you to accomplish. There's something that is supposed to be achieved by you. There's never a day on earth that there's something that God doesn't want to establish through you, accomplish through you. There's a schedule every single day. And see, the adventure of life is that you have to find what is the Holy Spirit wanting me to do today? Is the goal the same? Is it changing? And that's why we have this grace to seek God. Seeking God is really having a motive to find out what he has scheduled for you today. That's what seeking God is about. Seeking God is finding out what, who does he have for me today? Who am I supposed to talk to? Where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to say? Where am I supposed to invest all of myself today? Every day is not the same goal. Jesus wasn't planning to go to the cross on the day where he met the woman at the well. The woman at the well was on the schedule. So his mentality was not the same. There was a day where Elijah confronted the prophets of Baal. That wasn't the day that Elijah chose to go fishing. Or he would have never confronted the prophets of Baal. So prophetically, he knew today is where I confront the prophets of Baal. Remember when he told Elisha, I'm going to Bethel, I'm going here. You notice he knew that today I'm supposed to go to these locations. Elijah knew the schedule of God for that day. The same, you will have days where God will keep it hidden from you what he wants from you that day. And it's for you to seek him. Many women have operated like that. Many men have operated like that. They could be with their spouse. They could be with their man, their woman. And their spouse wake up and not know anything that they want for that day. Because that day now that person is a mystery. So if you look at them, you're like, what you want? Like, I can't figure you out today. Was it, what is it that you desire? And see, God created this quality called seeking because seeking is how you dominate over clarity. Seeking is how you dominate over clarity. So for you to understand things, you use the quality of seeking. Now watch this. Here's what's mighty about seeking. Seeking requires you to target one thing with all of your energy. One objective, one goal. So a lot of times people be lying when they say that they're seeking God because they're seeking also drama. Sometimes people say I'm seeking God, but then they're also seeking uh, people's approval that, that are not sent to their life. Sometimes people say I'm seeking God, but then they're also seeking how they could keep their fleshly schedule. So a lot of people lie. You see what I'm saying? They'll say I'm seeking God, but they're really seeking how they could, um, how could they engage in more trouble or conflict? How could they get revenge? Life is all about being intentional about there is a goal today that God wants to use me to complete. That's what life is all about. Like today, I worked out today. I Now, the Holy Spirit didn't take my stomach, my arms, and had me like this. No, no, no. That's not how things go. 
I intentionally took my body, knowing the pain that I was going to experience, knowing the discomfort I was going to have. And I took my body and I caused it to move in ways that are awkward. I was very aware that it was going to cause dis-ease. I was very aware that it was going to make the body feel disrespected. I was very aware that my body would tell me, you should really stop doing this because I don't like this. You're putting me in a very weird situation here. Your body talks to you. You ever notice that? That's why you can have hunger pains. Your body could talk. Life is so full of God that even the physical body could talk to you. Even the physical body, you have heard the voice of your body. That's how alive everything is. But I had to be intentional about working out. Now, watch this here. I didn't work out because it's just the right thing to do. I worked out because there is a goal. There is a picture that I see in my head that I'm moving towards. The only way you can protect your fruitfulness in this life in walking with God is that you must have a picture, a portrait, a photograph, something that is alive and well in your imagination of what you want to achieve with God. If you're a woman, what type of woman do you want to be? Do you want to be a whore? Do you want to be a queen? Do you want to be virtuous? Do you want to be dependable? Do you want to be distracted? Do you want the finale of your life to be said? Oh, she just was like, it wasn't nothing different about her. I mean, she it's not like she finished nothing. What is your goal as a man? Do you want to be a king or a ting? What's your goal as a male? Do you want to learn responsibility? Do you want to eradicate laziness? Do you want to continue generational curses? Do you want to allow the activity of Satan? There's something that happens when you as a man become a king. You don't permit evil. You don't permit evil in people that you love. You don't permit evil in your own life. You don't permit evil even in your city. You deal with matters in the spirit. Because that's the kingly thing to do. When you operate as a king, you have a dedication for the righteousness of God to be established in every situation. And so there is a goal that you have when you aim at excellence. Now, saints, there's a definition of excellence that I want to say as well. That excellence is also to review your work, review your work. That means that you go over something that you have already done. So excellence is going over something that you have already done. So say, um, say you drew a picture. You drew a picture of a fish. Excellence will be that after you draw the picture, you don't put the picture aside, but you relook at the picture. You, re you review it to see if it was done accurately. Now, saints, this is the mentality that you must approach towards the Holy Spirit. You should have talks with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, did you really like how I handled that? There are, uh, There is a question pattern that you could use that the Holy Spirit will always answer you on. Always. I mean, if you want to spark a conversation with the Holy Ghost, if you ask him these things, he will always speak to you. And saints, it's important for you to train yourself to ask the Holy Spirit certain things so that you can become common with the pattern of his voice, the signal of his voice. You want to learn the pattern of his voice. 
And so it's important that you ask him these certain questions because it will help you to discern and detect how he speaks, the signals in which he speaks to you. God speaks to everybody differently, but he speaks to everyone in a strong signal that's distinguished by specifically you. Some people don't learn through words. Some people learn through pain. Jonah did not learn to follow God through God talking to him. He learned to follow God when people picked his body up in the air and threw him over a boat. God speaking to Jonah was not his way of receiving the signal of God's voice. When they threw him over the boat, when he saw their rejection, when he saw the big old fish come and bite him, swallow him rather, that was his revelation of God's voice. That's what you call stubbornness. When you're stubborn, you unlock the violence of God. There are people that go through stubborn finances or, or violent finances. Did you know that poverty is violent finances? Did you know that? That's why you go, you ever heard somebody say, I'm going through a rough time. Rough. You ever heard somebody say that? I'm, I'm really going through a tough, a rough time in my life right now. Violent finances. There's a violent health. Sickness and disease is violent health. That's why even David said it was good for me to be afflicted. Afflicted. Which is the same word that is to describe diseases in the body and sickness in the body. Pain in the body. He said it was good for me to go through bodily harm where my physicality felt the communication of God's disapproval. Every day there's a goal that you have to accomplish and you got to be serious about the goal. You can't let people, you can't let people distract you from Tapping into the goal of the day. When you encounter people, it's very easy that somebody may say something wrong to you. Somebody might blow their horn while you're in the street. Like the other day, I saw somebody that was driving and another car had came over and it was OK. But they felt even though I'm a distant from you, don't get in front of me. So they started blowing Now, I'm sure that person that was in the car being blown at is not a good feeling. A horn, when you hear it, it sounds like somebody is disrespecting you. When you hear a horn blowing at you, you want to fight. If you got the tightest wig, when you hear that horn blow at you, you want to just take off your wig, just come out the car, you know. It doesn't, you know, that's what that's what ladies do. They take off their wig because they they really can't fight. People that have to prepare to do something really can't do it. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, oh, 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 when you have to prepare to do something, it's because you don't know how to do it. Preparation is an indication that you need more humility. You also need to look at what is God preparing me to become? 
What is God preparing me to do? Every time you get corrected, recognize what is God preparing me to become and what is God preparing me to do? How is God preparing me to think? Oftentimes you don't think about what's happening to me right now. There is a goal. There's a purpose in which God has seen for me. So when God told Apostle Paul, you're going to suffer these things. The real goal was, I need you to preach to the Gentiles. You see what I'm saying? So Apostle Paul's job is not to study. I'm going to suffer these things. Apostle Paul's job is to study. I'm going to win people that are considered unclean to God. The uncommon culture, the ghetto culture, the culture that seems that it has no dignity, the culture that seems that it has no training, I'm called to train them. You must never magnify your process from God over your promise from God because the promise is really the purpose of why the process is needed because God has a preference and he has a type that he's looking for. Do you think that God wants to marry you in this life? without training you to be his type? There's certain conversations God don't want to have with you. You're shocked? There's certain conversations God doesn't want to have with you. Did you talk to your three-year-old about sex? No, did you? Unless you're stupid. Unless you're dumb. You know why? Because that's not a type of conversation for their brain. There's some conversations God don't want to talk to you. Because you may be a toddler in the spirit. No prophet, I know a lot of stuff. I know a lot of stuff. Yeah, but you, th you still throw temper tantrums. You're a toddler. You know, prophet, you know, I, you know, I've been serving God all my life. I've been. Yeah, but you still get deceived with a wrong voice. <laughs> oh, God told me to 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 to. Uh, he told me to go in Victoria Secrets and 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 change the name of Victoria to Victory Secrets. And he told me to stand up and, and take the I and the A off and pit V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. And, and, and they came and arrested me, but I'm persecuted for Christ. And saints, do you know that there's people there's people that will pit their self in predicaments because they're toddlers. God never intended that, but they're a toddler. And the level of your brain is not at the level it should be. You respond according to a toddler's perception, not according to an adult. Did you know that there's some people that are 50 years old naturally, but they are three weeks mentally. Did you know that? I said, did you know that? Years ago, I had an instruction from the Lord to talk to strangers about Jesus and tell them that he loved them. One day I was inside of a McDonald's. I proceeded to tell a man that looked like Bill Cosby's brother. 
look borderline like Stevie Wonder cousin. I told him that Jesus loved him. He proceeded to snare at me disrespectfully. And he was talking and talking and he went go cuss me out and his teeth fell out all on the floor. I mean, Gums was more naked than Playboy. The nickname of his Gums should have been Hugh. Don't think about it too strong. His Gums fell out. <laughs> and the Gums fell out on the floor, boy. And saints, he was so embarrassed. He was so embarrassed that people was looking around. Oh. And you know, women, women are so savage. They are so savage because they, they, they add emphasis on situations in public. When stuff happened, they'd be like, oh. And that make people fight. Did you know that women are the main reason why people be fighting? Two men would be inside of a place. And that woman say, baby, he, he, he just shoved me. What you going to do? And the man will pop up, hey, 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 oh, uh, uh, excuse me. My, my wife said that you, and really, he not like that. Saints, the man teeth fell right out. And saints, I was about to ace town stump them teeth. I wasn't even about to pick them up. And saints, I think them days I was wearing Timberlands back then, the wind was hot. You know, you know some of y'all wore FUBU. Because you're you borderline broke. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> FUBU came out. You know what I'm saying? When we got, by the time we got to high school, everybody was shamed to wear FUBU. And Fila. Well, Fila done kind of changed up a little bit. But back in the day, you know, FUBU and stuff like that. And, and it was another one. It was another one. But his teeth fell out on the floor. And guess what? I went to A-Town, stumped them teeth assists. Boy, I wanted to get it ready to break it down. Boy, break it down, boy. I felt no compassion for him. He was talking real tough, talking against Jesus. And them teeth flipped out. And I, 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 saw, I saw it spiritually. I know them angels came and slapped them hammer knockers out. Bow! And since that man, he was so embarrassed, he ain't know if to pick them teethuses up. Since his coffee was juggling, you know, his hand was shaking. He was all nervous. And since them teeth was right there, I wanted to kick it. I wanted to kick them teeth further so he, he tried to find them underneath the tables. And saints, I looked at the situation from afar and I recognized, hey, this man lived decades longer than my physical body. This man lived probably over five to six more decades than my physical body. And look at the fool. Look at the fool. Imagine living your whole life and not knowing your creator. And then even years pass by decades and you snare at your creator reaching out to you. Saints, boy, I wanted to kick them. I wanted to say I wanted to kick them teeth all the way to Mexico. I wanted to kick it. I just want to I want I wanted to I wanted to kick it all the way. I wanted to Javante Davis them tifuses. I wanted to kick it all the way, boy. I just, I it, it, it was so much strength in my foot. Yeah, I, I never had much strength in my foot like that before, boy. I wanted to kick them, but saints, I started looking and recognizing. Wow, this man did not use his time correctly. His time didn't produce knowledge. His time didn't produce salvation. His time didn't produce the goal of God. Now he has more time than most people, but cannot be pulled upon to advance people with the knowledge he has obtained with the time. If you look at your life today, what is the major thing that God has given you time? He's given you the time for you to change how your brain functions. Your brain doesn't have to stay the way it is today. You're not stuck with any form of thinking. And everybody is intentional, even if you say you're intentional about nothing. 
There's nothing profit I'm intentional about. I need to get intentional. No, you're intentional about nothing. Everybody's intentional. If you look at your life today, you may say, oh, that's one of my problems. I need to start getting intentional. No, no, no. You are intentional. Nothing is your intention. Even a lazy person is intentional. They're intentional about nothing. Crazy people are intentional about insanity. Problematic people are intentional about their argument. Lustful people are intentional about their feelings. Hateful people are intentional about their jealousy. And jealous people are intentional about their hate. Loving people are intentional about their treatment. Treatment. Joyful people are intentional about their strength. Peaceful people are intentional about their words. Blessed are the peacemakers. The peacemaker is conscious of gracious words. In Ecclesiastes, it says the words of a wise man is gracious. Gracious. That means it's full of grace. In Colossians, Apostle Paul went on to teach that your words must be seasoned with grace. Grace is a supernatural transference of God's method to deal with life. When grace comes, you're receiving an impartation of how God deals with his speech, with his thoughts, with his behavior. God gives you his approach when he gives you his grace. So every time God gives you grace, he's saying, I'm giving you my approach. I'm giving you my meditation. This is how my brain handles this. So now you know why he told Apostle Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. He was saying, I'm giving you my perspective. How I view this, how I look at this. He was saying, I'm training you on my approach to this matter. This is how I view it. This is how I handle it. This is how I manage it. Grace is the father saying, I want to intercept your personality. I want to intercept your soul. And I want to do this in you, through you, and with you. So saints, the truth of the matter is the Bible says you come boldly to the throne of grace. You have to be intentional about that. Because coming boldly to the throne of grace really means that my motive is that I need God to transfer something that he has to me. But I don't qualify for it until I ask. Matthew chapter 7 says, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. Matthew 7 verse 8 says, And everyone that asks receives. And everyone that seeks finds. And everyone that knocks, the door shall be opened unto him. Saints... Those are one of the most powerful words of King Jesus in the word of God. That King Jesus said, everyone that acts receives. Wait a minute. So if I say, Lord, I'm asking you to give me grace to not be disrespectful to your presence, who you send to my life, not be disrespectful 
with how I ignore you, not be disrespectful in my form of reactions and behavior. Everything I ask, I receive. It says, seeking you shall find. So that means that if I'm in a place and I'm saying I'm seeking God for my healing, I'm going to find my healing. I'm seeking God to take away this disease. God is going to take away the disease. Everyone that seeks finds. The word find really means discovers. As you're joining in, share this broadcast and say, Lord, I receive the glory of your presence. I receive your blessing to my mind. I receive your glory light to my soul. If you knock, the door shall be opened unto you. That's what the word of God said. If you knock, the door shall be opened to you. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Jesus said, everyone that knocks, the door shall be open. It didn't say that it might be open. That means that if I set all my energy to follow God's laws, the law of sowing and reaping, the law of forgiving those that offend you, the law of praying without ceasing, the law of giving thanks, the law of praising God, enter into his courts with praise. That means that my praise is determining verdicts. I could get God to lean in my favor. If I praise him, I celebrate him. And praise is not just verbal. It's a verb, it's an action. So when I praise God, I, I don't just do it with my physicality or with my words. I do it with my body. If I follow God's laws without wavering, did you know that diligence? Diligence is where I quickly summons my focus to achieve what God desires. That's a wisdom door. That's the wisdom anointing. Diligence is where I quickly summons my focus to achieve something that God desires. There's a powerful anointing flowing on here. As you're joining in, share this broadcast. Get the gospel out to your pages. As you're joining in, I need over. There's over 300 people on here. I need 300 people that will be my Gideon army. Let's do war with the prince of the power of the air and share this broadcast to your page. We have over 400 people on here right now. Let me have 300 of you to share this to your page right now. Be intentional about every single day. And you'll have to do things that you really don't feel like doing. That's why you have to make the plan to do it. Don't wait for the feeling. Stick to the plan. Don't wait for the feeling. Stick to the plan. When you wait for the feeling, the feeling may be adversarial to the plan. In Psalm 71, verse 16, it says, I will go in the strength of the Lord. Psalm 71, verse 16, said, I will go in the strength of the Lord. I will go in the strength of the Lord. Now, since the text is very powerful and it's very simple, and some of y'all probably never heard this text before, but the Bible says, I will go in the strength of the Lord. Nehemiah 8.10 said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So 
what David is saying here, I will go in God's joy. Now, joy is a fruit of the spirit, which you can obtain intentionally. When you are intentional, there's nothing that you can achieve. That's why God knew when they was on one accord to build the Tower of Babel that they would build it because they was on one accord. He knew that they was on one accord. So he told and released a decree to switch their language because now their intentionality, their motive could be suffocated. Saints, God built you that when you give your attention to a thing, you will accomplish it, even if it is to slander someone. Many people destroy each other because they're intentional about the destruction. Cain was so intentional about killing Abel that he even tricked him and said, come out to the field. Let's just have a good talk together. Let's have a little picnic. And when he came out to the field, he killed him. Being intentional is energy. Being intentional is energy. And when you give yourself over to divine motives, you produce miracles. Divine motives makes you a miracle worker. God used you to do supernatural things, but you gotta be intentional about divine motives. You notice, look at the book of Acts. Peter went up to pray for the hour of prayer. Remember the disciples? They went up to pray. They set a time for prayer. They was intentional. That's the power of intentionality. If that's not a word, I made it. Intentionality. Being intentional. Having a vitality. To train your imagination that there's something I'm supposed to accomplish that the Lord is going to find pleasure in today. There's something that he wants from me. There's words that he want to hear me speak. There's deeds he want to see me do. There's information he wants to hear me hear. There's behaviors that he want to see displayed. There's conduct he wants to see me perfect. There's attitudes he wants me to carry. There's seeds he wants me to sow. There's problems he wants me to break. He wants me to dissolve issues. He wants me to make peace. There's something he wants me to study today. For Daniel, opening the window three times to pray was the goal of God for his life. And because Daniel had the spirit of excellence, he found it. For Esther, the goal of God was to expose Haman because Haman wanted to destroy the people of Israel. So the goal of God was to bring Esther's mind into the plot of Haman. The goal for King Ahasuerus was to discover that Haman was a wrong person to honor. Haman was a wrong person to promote. Haman was a wrong person to endorse. The goal for Mordecai was Mordecai, don't conform to the praise and celebration of Haman. The Bible said Mordecai did not bow. The goal for Rahab was to protect Joshua's spies, but because she chose the fear of God, she was able to discover what was the goal. See, God's goal for your day is discovered by you when you have the right qualities that you're picking. So if you pick pride, anger, bitterness, resentment, 
You can't find God's goals. You can't find God's goals. You can't find God's goals. God's goals will not be magnified to you. It will not be clear. It will not be transparent and it will not be accessible. The only way for you to find the goal of God, the plan of God in a day is if you choose his qualities. Now you understand why I could teach you that there was woman in the Old Testament. They didn't have the level of the Holy Ghost working and demonstrating himself as you do today, but they were virtuous and powerful because they chose the right qualities. So even though there wasn't an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, like in the book of Acts, they still was powerful as if it was because they chose the right qualities. There was men that didn't have the outpouring of the Holy Ghost like we see today, like we have in this New Testament, but they were kingly. They were trustworthy. They were fathers. They were prophets. They were used by God and he could depend on them to carry out his work and get his mission done. You know why? Because they chose his qualities. So every day you have to choose God's qualities. And that's on you. Every day you wake up, you have a reset of time. You could choose to be different. You don't have to settle for the verdict of yesterday's carnality. You don't have to settle for the verdict of yesterday's carnality. You ever heard that before? You don't have to accept defects in your character. Think about it. How many people say, I'm the type of person that does this? I'm the type of person that says this. Why have you received something that Satan gave you? I'm the type of person. I don't let people. I don't let people. What if God puts you in a place and that is the whole goal of God for you to let your light so shine? But I'm the type of person. I don't let that. I, I'm the type of person. And Satan has been manipulating what you produce in this life by you defending characteristics that didn't even come from God. There's women that act like men. A woman is supposed to be soft. There are men that act like women. A man is supposed to be a man. Being a man means it don't matter if I love you, I'm still going to rule. It don't matter if I like you. It don't matter if, 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 if I pick you. I'm still going to rule. Because I'm a man. I'm not a woman. And I'll never be a woman. I know the part that I have. I can see, feel, hear, and know who I am. There's many women that act like a man. Oh, yeah, you use a man. That's not what women do. Women who know who they are are soft. They're soft in their answer. They're soft in their reaction. They're soft in their behavior. They're soft in their aura. All of them is soft. The reason why women are such good nurturers, are created to be good nurturers of children, is because a woman was really supposed to be soft and patient. I told my daughter Zendaya, I told her, I said, Zendaya, you know, I love you. She like, I love you, daddy. I said, but know this, my love for you doesn't mean that you're going to do what you want. If I say something, just know you're going to do it. If I tell you to sit down, it don't matter if I love you, you're going to sit down. There is a goal for why God made you who you are. You're a woman because there's a goal. God wanted to see submission. There's a man. God made you a man because he wanted to see dominion. He wanted to see himself in you. He wanted to see Jehovah Jr. That's what he wanted. God wanted to see Jehovah Jr. That's why he made you a man. He made you a woman because he wanted you to help Jehovah Jr. 
So Adam is Jehovah Jr. He makes a woman called to help me. She's going to help you as your Jehovah Jr. She is a Jehovah Jr. helper. So she's helping God. There's a goal for even your gender. There's a goal for why God gave you the hair that you have or the hair that you don't have. There was a goal for why Elisha was baldy. He was bald headed. There was a goal for why Elijah was hairy. There's a goal for why Apostle Paul was a very short man. He was very short. There was a goal for why Saul was a very tall man. King Saul was very tall. There's a goal for why your body is shaped the way it is, or formed the way it is. If your body is formed a certain way that God never intended it to be, there's a goal for you to change it. Sometimes people choose to be extremely overweight and God has hidden a goal for them to lose that weight through discipline. Sometimes there is a goal for you to gain more weight. You were skinny because they starved you <laughs> as a little child. Sometimes skinny people are not supposed to be skinny, but you went through a hard time. You grew up in poverty. You went through a lot of deficits in provision, and that's okay. So your body was formed as a skinny person when God Bless you, he have you eat something. When God gives you favor, he'll show you how to change that appearance. Some people grew up with bad hygiene. That means that God has a goal to train you how to smell good. Nobody told you that you're white front to back. Don't think about it too strong. Your parents, they was too drunk to do it front to back. They was back to front. I'm talking about male and female. Back to front. So when you get older, God has a goal to train you front to back. Even things that's out of place, there is a goal hidden in the thing that's out of place. So you look at the thing, it, it wasn't supposed to be like this. I, I, I can't believe that they raised me like this. But there's a goal that you now can conquer, that you could discover and achieve. And the goal is now something that the Holy Spirit wants to partner with you to bring transformation on. Sometimes people grow up very poor. That's why there's a goal to make you very rich. Sometimes you grow up very rich. That's why there is a goal to give you a cross to train you how to be humble. And sometimes it, the path that God picks, he'll say, give what you have over to the poor because he's establishing the goal to take away the pride that you have because your beginning was real silver spoonish. It was real easy. See, saints, I tell you my story sometimes, but what you got to understand, I grew up like a mommy's boy where I had everything at my grip. My mother was a working woman. Single parent. I had Jordans. The newest ones. I had jewelry when I went to school. My teachers used to say. Miss Holmes, your son can't wear jewelry to school. Because that makes other children feel bad. One time my teacher took out his watch and said, look at my watch. It don't even cost as much as your son. 
Why do you have him wearing this? May I tell you that my mother told him to go to hell. <laughs> she told him just like that. I was a little boy. I was, Cause my my mother was she 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 was she was she was in the Bible and stuff like that. But when she said that, I was like, yeah. <laughs> when my mother said that, boy, I was going crazy. My mother. Since I was in the back of my mind, whoa, 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 whoa. I wanted to show the teacher like this here. But I kept my composure. She told him to go to hell. And she said it so calm. That's what was shocking to me. It, it was just so smooth. She didn't yell. She didn't get up. She, she didn't point her finger in his face. She just said, go to hell. And the man, you you know you know when uh, proper people get embarrassed, they be like they start fixing their tie and stuff. And he he didn't even stay there too long. He just went over to the next subject because he was embarrassed. If you don't discover the goal for your life, you're going to blame other people of why you're not producing. You're going to blame situations of why you're not producing when really you just haven't found the goal of God for today.